Well, I guess you just have to be prepared to die. Well, what? Pay attention. Get off your cell phones. Pay attention. All right, Annabelle, how are you doing? Fabulous, and you? Good, good. Staying busy. That's good. <laughs> so how's work going? Work staying is busy? going really good. Yeah, I'm definitely staying busy. Um, been doing lots of Halloween content lately and cosplays, so that's yeah. been keeping me busy. <laughs> what do you usually, like, what's your go-to for, like, a cosplay? My go-to for a costume, I don't really have a go-to usually. One, I will say, one that I repeat every year is a dirndl, like a German dirndl for, like, Oktoberfest, Halloween. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. My husband's from Germany, so I have a whole bunch of dirndls. Um, okay. So I do that every year, but this year um, I did a little bit more like Halloween, Halloweeny stuff, okay. which I usually yeah. don't do. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it. Like you get kind of burnt out at a certain age. Where you're just like, damn, I don't really feel like fucking dressing up for Halloween. But yeah, absolutely. Mm. I definitely did get a little bit of burnout. Like once COVID started happening, I kind of had to like rethink everything because it was good. Everything was very busy, but um. Mm. It was feeling like work, which I didn't like. So mm -hmm. I had to, yeah. 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 So, so has, has COVID been kind of a hindrance to you or? No, it my, seems like a 50 /50, you know, for everybody. Yeah. Like, yeah, it slows down like production work, but you have OnlyFans or, I mean, I assume you do. And then it's perfect for that. So yeah, yes, I'm an OnlyFans girl. And it didn't really affect me too much at all. Actually, my life didn't change too much. But I mean, I had plans of travel and stuff and working with um, other female talent. But that was about it. Just kind of. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, is there any way for you to still do any of that? Because it does seem like things are getting uh, somewhat more relaxed. I mean, I guess it depends on where you're at. Like I'm in Texas and we just never really gave a shit from the beginning. <laughs> you know, things have not really changed here like at all, which is probably not a good idea, but I don't know. Crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. What was the question? <laughs> like, is there now that things do seem to be relaxing a little bit, have you been able to kind of schedule some of those things again? Like, yeah, um, I have, I mean, I've slowly been like venturing out of the house in safe ways. Um, I'm in Florida, so they like just kind of reopened everything up. Um, but I'm kind of just saying no to shooting with other people for the time being. I know that other people are doing it, but I know it's kind of a lot of hoops with extra testing and all that stuff. So I'm just kind of I, my solo content usually does best anyway. So I'm just focusing on being with myself all day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, that's, God, that's got to be the best way. I mean, if you can do better, like on your own, then Jesus, you don't have to worry yeah. about anybody. Else yeah. I'm very lucky that I kind of built myself up from a solo performer from the beginning. Yeah. So I'm very grateful mm -hmm. for that. I mean, are there things that you don't necessarily like about doing, um, you know, like, not to say like group, but, you know, just with another person, like, is it kind of just something that you're just not into doing or? I am like really into it. I'm bisexual. So like, oh my gosh, I love women so much. Um, but it definitely, I am a bit of a control freak a little i don't know it's almost very it's not as relaxed for me i'm usually like we have to do this and this and this. i'm like a big planner i do go with the flow sometimes i'm like let's just like see where this goes um mm -hmm. but i will say at the end of the day i feel like i like working by myself 
more. But it is okay. fun working with other people. I like doing a little of both. I'll say that. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. that makes sense. Like, yeah. I'm kind of the same way. Like, yeah. I do things done my way. Yeah, and like, I'm not good at group way. projects. Like, I'm not good on being at a team. Like, I'm a very independent worker. So I think that's where it collides. But of course, girls are, yeah, yeah it's pretty well, easy going. Yeah, no, I, I was always like that too. Like, any group project, group assignment, like, fucking, I'll just I'm like, it. I'm just going to do everyone's work. Yeah. Like, you're all going to screw it up anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I can understand how that can translate to to your yeah. work. Just being like, especially if you have something in your head that you want to do. And yeah. it's very hard to relay that to another person. Yes, like, it is very hard for them to, like, get the concept without yeah and then you don't want to like drill them right before the scene because then they're like oh my god like <laughs> ruins the sexiness yeah but, but i guess you could do i mean there's a fucking genre for everything so I mean, you exactly could i am very go with the flow at the end of the day at the end of the day they like the amateurness and stuff and they don't care that yeah it's, it's, it all adds yeah they i've never i don't know why but amateur like I like it to an extent, but I just there are certain things like in porn that I like I respect that people have their own, you know, whatever they like, but I just don't understand like why they like it. Okay. And there's some amateur where it's just so shitty, like how how it's done. I'm just like, how do people like this? <laughs> then you look and it's got like twenty million views. Yeah. But yours yeah. is not like that. Like yours is still like professional quality. Yeah, I am. Um, I do like to like have things well lit and like be professional yeah. without like, I mean, I, I don't have like a crew to help me. It's just my yeah. husband and I so we can only do so much. Um, yeah. But I try not to sweat the small stuff too much. But yeah, mainstream and like uh, professional is good because everything's like well lit, like you can see every yeah. hole, like everything yeah. is amazing. Like, you're not yeah. like, damn, that's a bad angle, but yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just don't like watching porn that looks like it's shot from, like, not even their cell phone, like an old cell phone, like a fucking right. razor. Yeah, like, yeah, some get real amateur. They really commit. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, damn, like, I could have done this better than that. <laughs> it's so hard, though. Let me tell you. It looks easy. It's just, like, you think that you can just hold the phone and do it, but it, it is, like very hard for the man yeah, for the man to like stay hard film like get the angles this comes going oh, everywhere gets out of no. control fast there's no way i could do it i <laughs> can't multitask for shit so I, yeah. <laughs> well i, I know a lot of guys are like strap and go pros everywhere and it's just someone needs to invent like a really good technology or a camera that like keeps it steady for doing stuff. yeah there's an i i could never do it <laughs> like I have so much respect for people that are in like the porn industry because like yeah. it's obviously a fantasy for like every guy like yeah. thank god i would love to you know have sex with these women blah 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 and get paid for it like all this stuff but it, there's just no way that like 90 percent of guys could do it i feel maybe I mean, I'm not absolutely here. not and that's the thing i get and every performer gets it we get countless emails of people like how do I get into the industry like I have a big dick and I fuck my girlfriend for three hours a day I'm like that is great but um pretty much you have to like have sex in front of people and the moment that there's like expectation put on it like if someone ordered a custom video or you are doing a live cam show or a live scene like there's pressure to perform and that will really like it's really a mental thing like I know some guys in the industry like they have to do um, i think even some guys did like hypnosis like just to help them yeah. keep hard yeah. and you have to have like a good diet too um <laughs> to get those big loads and um yeah there's a lot that goes into it. a lot of people say they can do it but it's like a lot men weren't really made to like perform in that way with that pressure they're the secret to everything <laughs> they yeah. if um for the boy girl scenes like they drive the whole scenes and like direct everything yeah. and make the girls look pretty they don't get yeah. enough recognition so <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just i don't know i cannot imagine it like and it's not that well i mean i'm pretty terrible at sex but like 
it's the like the performance anxiety of it that would be the yeah. worst. Like, yeah, like, the I performance can... anxiety will definitely make. And then if you have to do a cut or do a different angle, like you have to yeah. stop for a little bit, maybe move the lights, then you lose your boner, and then like yeah. it's um, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it's not natural. Yeah. It's okay. So yeah. But what are some of the like the downsides for a female performer? I mean, do you face some of those same performance anxiety issues or is it a lot easier, do you think? I feel like it's easier because, I mean, depending on what you're doing, like you can fake stuff if you're yeah. doing that. Um, yeah. But I feel like the hardest part is we're always thinking about like, do we look good right now? Like, mm -hmm. is there something on my butt? Is my makeup running? Is my hair mm -hmm. crazy? Um, but then I think once you just like let go and like realize you're going to get messy and that's all going to happen, it's fine. But yeah, yeah. I think, did you have, say oh, that sorry, again? Well, did you have anxiety like at first, like the no. slowly ease away? No, or? I was just super excited. Like my heart was beating fast. I don't think I like, I didn't want to eat anything like rich for the day. I was just like eating yogurt and light things. I'm, like I can't yeah. be bloated. Um, yeah. So I get like really excited. It's fun like getting ready in the process and preparing. And so mm -hmm. I think I get more anxiety about checking the footage after to see if it like looked as good as I thought it did. Yeah, yeah that's the worst. The worst has got to be watching yourself back. Like. Yeah. Well, because with being amateur at home, like I have to put all my trust in my husband to with the filming and lights and I, he's not a professional by any means. Like we yeah. both kind of learn together, but I think I'm like performing, but also making sure the lights look good. Also making sure like everything else looks good because if I don't yeah. call it out, then I know that we'll have some ruined scenes, which we've had, yeah. but it's yeah. all a learning experience. So. Yeah. I just, I think you have to have a pretty good amount of confidence for yourself. Yeah. To do With that. this job, you see yourself naked at every single position. <laughs> like I know what everything looks like, like everything. And it's just, yeah, no one looks at themselves that much. Like uh -huh. I know my body like way more now because you're always like masturbating in front of, well, not always, but you know, <laughs> masturbating in front of a mirror. I'm like, wow, like this is what it looks like you you yeah. really learn your body and yourself so. yeah see i think it's i mean it's healthy to be like that because i <laughs> am not that way like if i'm like going to take a shower and i catch a glimpse of myself i'm like that's no. what that looks like oh, no <laughs> no i know what you mean no yeah i'm like hopefully quick get in the shower hopefully like i'll come out pretty somehow but yeah. uh, <laughs> no i doubt that stop that but yeah. um I love the sexy scruff, by the way. Thank you. Thank and the you. chest hair. I like hairy men. There's not enough hairy men in porn for me personally. Yeah, it kind of died out, I think, yeah. like in the 70s. I'm like. into the hairy. There's a lot of waxed chests now and stuff. Um, yeah, that's really strange to me for some reason. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really know what like, preferences for most women, but I would just think that like the hairy chest would be a yeah. good way to go. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, one day I went to the beach and like every single guy didn't have a hairy chest. I was like, oh, what's happening? <laughs> but everyone's losing their hair. But yeah, that's just me. I like hairy men. So, but yeah, you know. it's, yeah, that's mine. Well, my chest is all uh, plugs. <laughs> Very beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, so when did you start? I mean, how long have you been doing? Um, I think it's been about four years almost now. Okay. Um, I started, um, I was living in Germany at the time and I had recently just married my husband and I was actually working as a nanny at the time and I wasn't making really good money and I was getting really worn out um, watching everyone else's kids and cleaning everyone else's house. And so since I was living in Germany, um, it was hard for me to find a job um, where I didn't have to speak German because I knew German, but I wasn't fluent. So I was like trying to apply to like Irish bars. And yes. I did get, um, I worked as um, like a tutor and stuff to help with people's okay. English homework. But then I came across an article about camming 
And mm -hmm. I kind of showed my husband and he was like, no, that's going to like ruin our sex life. Like, no. And I thought mm -hmm. I could get away with it where I could wear a mask and like no one would ever know who I was. Yeah. So yeah. I definitely should have prepared a little bit more. But um, yeah. right after I read the article, I started stalking cam models and watching people on cam. And I was like, this is really mm -hmm. cool. And so I did it. And first of all, I was like sweating like crazy under the mask. I'm like, this is not going well. <laughs> but my first uh, session on cam, I didn't even think of anything. I was just, people are like, can I see your tits? I'm like, sure. Like, I'm like, they'll tip if they're enjoying it. Like, I didn't know how to um, have my business model. And, but it was still really fun. I was just kind of doing it for the fun, like side money, try it. And then I just got obsessed and I got deeper and deeper in and I really liked the industry and people then started asking me for my Snapchat and custom videos and it just kind of grew from there. But, yeah. 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 So where did you, I mean, do you have like short term, long term, medium term goals that you see for yourself or do you just kind of take it as, as I it come? I try, but I realize like things change. Um, yeah. It's kind of, especially these times, things are very unpredictable. I was actually going to make one of my um huge goals in the industry okay. this year but with covid so i've just let that go it'll happen yeah. again um once things open up what but um or, what keep, what was it or it, it was working with my most favorite female performer ever i'm like yeah. unhealthily obsessed with her so maybe it's good maybe we needed a cool off period <laughs> but yeah. um it is like one of the biggest female porn stars. Anyway, yeah. um, I don't want to say it out loud to jinx it or like okay. get everyone's hopes up. I've told a few people, so anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but um, where was I? So I do have goals for myself, but I just kind of take it slow and I'm trying not to be like all work. I think for a while I was kind of doing the toxic work hustle for a little bit. So definitely um, this period during COVID, it's taught me just to take a breather and do more self-love and not work so goddamn much <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what i've been trying to do too but yeah um, it's it's hard i'm i've been trying to do hobby it, it feels weird like doing something just for fun with no end goal like just painting for yeah. fun or you know i've been meditating daily and stuff just trying to stay sane during all of this mm -hmm. so i've yeah i don't have any goal my goal is to just <laughs> keep on being successful just keep growing yeah. pretty much yeah, yeah. so I mean, stay that's, inspired that's, yeah that's the best goal you could have because i mean you got to keep it vague enough but still something that you can aim towards so absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. do you Cause, have because the sorry, one no. sorry i keep cutting you off i apologize <laughs> um <laughs> uh where was i going with this it was i was going i totally forgot you go <laughs> so do you have like any kind of bucket list of things that you want to do certain things you want to try like in your career um there i definitely do have a bit of a bucket list working with one of the performers was like um definitely at the top um i really want to work for or write for pure taboo i love pure taboo they're mm. a porn studio i love brie mills yeah. um so that would just kind of be my goal would to be to maybe mm -hmm. write a script or be in one of those porn studio things but um mm. otherwise i don't have too much huge aspiration i like where i'm at <laughs> it's at a very like tolerable level yeah. i don't want to get too famous <laughs> I want to like just maintain <laughs> this nice little bubble I'm in. Yeah. I mean, do you get recognized often though? Um, I, not often, but I will get texts like, oh, I just saw you here. I just saw you there. Like you, I just saw okay. you there. Um, yeah. Like I think the first time was in a DMV, a male nurse recognized mm -hmm. me. It's like, that's <laughs> cool. You should have said yeah. hi. <laughs> but um, yeah. So yeah, there's been a few, but I don't have people like coming up and trying to ask for my autograph or anything. Oh, I get a lot of people saying you look super familiar. I was like, oh, <laughs> and I don't think they know where they know me from. But no, they do. They just 
<laughs> yeah, no, that's a, a that's a tr- like a easy trick for guys to do is to be like, well, I th- I'm pretty sure I know you from someone. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> funny. Yeah, you pull up the search history and you're like the first name. <laughs> like I'm your background phone background. No. But... <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you have like certain extremes that you cut yourself off from, like with sex, like? I mean, career-wise, not like personal life, but like, like kind of um, hard limits where you're like, ah, like I get that that's for some people, but I'm not doing that shit. Or like, do you have things that, that you thought maybe were hard limits and then you were like, well, maybe I'll try this at some point. I definitely do. As I, especially as I'm like aging within this industry too, Mm -hmm. um, my interests are even changing a little bit with things I'm trying. Um, I've definitely been enjoying anal more. That's been a fun one. At first, like my first butt plug, I'm like, this is horrible. Um, But now I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Um, So I've definitely gotten more comfortable with that and like anal beads and dildos and stuff. Um, There was uh, one thing, um, like people really like extreme boob bouncing or even when I like slap my boobs and I do bounce them and I slap them. But I think there's people that want me to like tie them really tight till they like turn purple or slap them until they bruise and I'll like slap them until they're red. But it's, um, I don't, I'm not into like pain, pain too much. Like I'll like pinch and stuff like that, playful stuff. Um, But I think being a bigger chested model, there's definitely, they want me to just, beat up on my boobs so that's definitely a hard limit that I have to say no to often but otherwise I am pretty open-minded with like fetishes and stuff I know there's like um I don't do the poop fetish or the farting fetish I can't fart on command so it's really hard Yeah. yeah it's a see like I mean I'm not into that shit either but But if for some reason it always comes up, like whenever I go to like Pornhub or something, it's like one of like my recommended videos. It's like, how huge. Is this it's recommended huge. to me. Like I've yeah. never looked at this. They know. But, they know you'll come around. You'll come around. You'll see it but, enough. <laughs> yeah. Then I just start thinking. I'm like, it's insane that there are so many people that like that works for them. Right. I feel like it's something where like girls aren't supposed to do that. So it's like this mysterious thing and they've just, it's kind of become their thing. So yeah, it's, it's, that's what a lot of fetishes are really are just taboos that people wish they could see, but can't really see in the regular life. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that doesn't seem like the whole, like, um, like incest porn, you know, like, yeah. Like, that's a strange one to me, too. I mean, mostly just because everyone in my family is, like, ugly as hell. But, <laughs> but like, I've, I've never... I feel like incest, for some people, like, represents something like motherly love. For example, like, mom roleplay. Because MILF is the most famous, like, searched term, I think. MILF, mom. Yeah. And it's, yeah. like, usually a man's first love. Like, usually you're supposed to, like, have a good loving connection with your mom or a motherly mm-hmm. figure. So it's just kind of this, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of, like, the basis for it. But I, I've i talked to a lot of people that are, like, my mom is, like, super ugly. I would never fuck her. But, like, I want to <laughs> fantasize you as my mom. So I think some of it is, like, deeper, deeper rooted than that. Yeah. But... Yeah, um, yeah, I can see that because like my mom looks like Mel Gibson. <laughs> Mel Gibson's hot though, so <laughs> yeah, but he's also you know a sixty-year-old man, like <laughs> <laughs> this rugged. Can yeah, yes, that is true. My mom is very rugged. <laughs> oh, I'm sure, she's a lovely lady. <laughs> uh, you shouldn't have said things. No, I'm joking. she's. <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah. So, I mean, how does, do you think that being in the adult film industry has made you more confident or have you just always been a confident person? Um, I've always been a very confident person. Um, I came from parents that like loved me a lot and were always complimenting me, telling me my worth. Um, 
Mm-hmm. And I was actually homeschooled until eighth grade. So okay. once I got to high school, I was like, oh my gosh, boys. And I was like obsessed. Yeah, and um, so I loved like getting attention from guys and teasing mm-hmm. them. And I was one of those girls in high school where I was saving it for marriage. So I would like do everything like besides sex. And I got called to tease all the time. But I've always been a very confident person. Um, I would say like for a little bit, I think I kind of got into a filming rut where I just wasn't feeling good and kind of losing confidence. But obviously no one's 100% confident all the time. And I do have my insecure times. And especially when you're like naked every day filming in like 4K, it's kind of hard to feel like a supermodel so much, but yeah. Yeah, that, I can I can get that too. Cause I mean, you're seeing yourself in, I mean, I guess you could call it a vulnerable position, but way more than the average person ever is. So yeah. you kind of, I feel like if you don't already have some basis of self-esteem or confidence, like it could really tear you down, you know? Yeah, like if you're not, you know, absolutely. And yeah, people will make like, I, and then your like body is there on the internet for people to judge and make comments about, but yeah, you just kind of have to have just, yeah, people are people <laughs> on the internet, so. Yeah, people are, uh, people are assholes for the most part, like sort of on the internet when they can hide. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure that like you hear some crazy shit that's like, obviously they would never say to your face. But. Right, and usually when they're so mean, it usually makes me sad because I feel like people are kind of projecting a bit and usually I just ignore it. I don't even, I won't even block them because I feel like that's still giving them energy. I just kind of read it, let it go and yeah. send positive vibes their way. That is definitely the healthiest way to handle it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not on that level. I'm petty <laughs> as hell. Tom Petty. Like, are you I'm, fighting back? Like. <laughs> I'll try not to, but damn, sometimes people are just so good at digging. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Say mm-hmm. and I don't, it's like an ego thing, which I try to like, you know, get rid of any of that. But sometimes I'm just, I don't know what it is, but it's kind of fun to like poke back a little bit. I don't right. know. Right. Definitely. I know how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, do you see yourself venturing into like actually becoming like more involved with production like later on or just staying kind of, you know, like acting? I think I might um, just stay. One thing I found out, I definitely love working for myself. I don't love working for other studios too much. Um, I like love working for myself. It's the best thing. And at the end of the day, it's where I make the most money and I have control over everything. I can do things on my own time. So I really love that. I was thinking of um, kind of starting a studio and shooting other girls, but now with COVID, I'm kind of like, not really going to be happening. So I'm just kind of focusing on myself and my brand and kind of keeping it steady. Yeah. I mean, OnlyFans has really made that such a lucrative way of, you know, of having a career because, I mean, before that, yeah, I mean, I guess unless you're just doing like real amateur stuff, I mean, you're really just working for a company and I don't really know how the pay works for that, but I can't imagine it's anything like having an OnlyFans where that's all you Yeah. So in the industry, you used to have to be like a contract girl and like sign with a studio to like even make it. And for porn, usually you're paid a one time fee and then you'll never see another dime from that video. So it's really nice for the uh, people that do decide to do the clip stores and the fan sites like OnlyFans because we're constantly making passive income. And once we put work into that video, we're going to keep seeing money being made off of that video versus... um, the mainstream porn, which is the mainstream porn, it's amazing promo. Like you get tons of fans, like they built all that. But if you're willing to build your own brand, um, definitely just invest in your own stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. And it's just great not having a damn boss. 
<laughs> yeah, I love it. And I'm just kind of like, I don't really know what's going to happen today, but we'll go with the flow, see where it leads me. And usually once I kind of take care of myself and I do my work and then it's happy. And so it's all Well, I'm sure it just alleviates so much stress of like being told no, or your hair needs to look like this, not this. I mean, you could just do whatever the hell you want. Yeah. You you can, and um, it, it's very empowering because I've always had a job, especially when I was a nanny, I was always on someone else's time. Like if they needed to come home later, then my plans like came second. So, um, and I've worked retail and the food service industry, so I know how it is and um, it can drive you nuts. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's no being able to actually have your own content that you're making on your own. I mean, there's there's no way that you can beat that. I mean, I'm sure there's, you know, distribution or things like that that may be better if you're in a production company. But I don't know. Porn is just such a fucking massive like empire of entertainment that yeah. I don't think you can struggle with, like not having yeah. a company. It's one of, there's enough money for everyone to like have their little portion if you're willing to put in the work. There's not, we're not fighting over it. <laughs> it's definitely become oversaturated, especially with the pandemic and OnlyFans getting more popular. But um, yeah. Yeah, I will say that that's one thing that, and it just is going to happen with anything. The easier something becomes, the more there are people that don't really need to be doing it. Mm -hmm. And now you have like, people on OnlyFans is just making goddamn mac and cheese. It's like, nah, come on now. Like people are paying you, you know, like, right. Shows, like do something like nobody's trying to watch you cook lunch. But like, <laughs> <laughs> so do you recommend it for other people? Like if somebody was to, if somebody was to go up to you and say, Hey, I'm thinking about doing it, but I'm not really sure what, it, what kind of advice would you give them? So the advice that I would give them is um, if you put something on the internet, it will be on there forever. And uh, when I first started, I wanted to like hide this from like my family and friends, like everyone. I was like geo blocking the whole Midwest where I was from and trying to keep it out. But then people steal things, they record things, they post it somewhere else. Um, so I would say this industry is for you if you can first accept that every single person you know will find out, your grandma, everyone. And um, even if you have kids one day maybe, or you just kind of have to think of the above steps and realize that this is a permanent decision and this will like forever be on your forehead. and. Um, if you're willing to accept that and you're open, um, and I wouldn't even say that you have to, I think that kind of goes for everyone in the sex industry and you don't even have to be the most sexual person. I feel like I think there's a lot of girls that do very fetish stuff or they don't even get naked. So you don't feel like you have to do the most hardcore, crazy double anal stuff because it's not needed. There's, you can find a niche for whatever you're comfortable doing. So just do what you want to do. So I wouldn't recommend it um, to everyone. I would tell them to think about it and then think about it and then double check and think about it and do your research. Um, but if you're willing to put yourself out there, then go for it. Yeah, that's yeah. And I that's kind of what I think is that and you could correct me if I'm wrong on this, but it's not something you should try. Like it's yeah. either something you're going to do or just don't do it because yeah. of the fact that it's permanent. So, yeah, you only did it for a week. But that video is not going down because you decided to stop. Like Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Every everything is on there. So and you just kinda have to own it. Like at the end of the day, like stop worrying about what everyone else thinks. And if you really want to do it, then just do it. Life is too short. So yeah. I mean, it's I'm a sure, fun industry. Yeah. Like I can't imagine that it's not like probably the most fun industry to be in. Yeah, I would, there's constant, there's so many interesting people and everyone's like so open-minded and cool. I think that's definitely one of the most exciting things. And uh, I think there's, uh, obviously there's parts of the industry which aren't good and are very toxic, but there's also parts that are amazing. And 
Um, I remember when I first started and other models were like commenting on my trailers, like this looks amazing. I was like, oh my gosh, everyone is so nice. So yeah. um, it's fun. And I'm sure that now like any of the toxic parts that were there probably get flushed out a lot faster than they used to. So it's yeah. probably not as bad as 10 years ago or maybe hell, maybe even like five years ago. And they, they, and they don't last as long. I think it's just kind of little humps and, um, you know, people that maybe need to get it. Because there's a lot of people doing this, that, which they should not be doing it. And I think there's kind of toxic people everywhere you go in every environment. But, um, yeah, you can kind of choose your own little bubble with things. But Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure the reputation sticks pretty, you know, quick. So, which is a good thing, you know, that it's, it's probably a lot more transparent now. Yeah, especially with social media more, like everyone has a voice now, so. Yeah, so I mean, do you think that given the opportunity, you would start doing, like let's say, you know, COVID goes away, everything's back to normal. Would you wanna start doing a lot more like group scenes or things like that? I actually don't think so. I think, I mean, never say never. Again, I love working with female talent, but um, I think it's something that I would maybe do like a few times a year and then, you know, my few little scenes and then be done with it and yeah. then just be with me. So I kind of like working at my own pace and it's just very comfortable and I've kind of found my own groove with things. So. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe one year I'll go crazy though. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it a, I mean, was there anything that was surprising to you from, you know, before you started like, you know, everybody I'm sure has a misconception about like the porn industry, but as someone who's actually in it, like, did you have misconceptions that got proven wrong? I feel like I had a whole bunch of mess conceptions i mean it's actually just crazy i slowly learned everything like i made so many um mistakes in the beginning amateur mistakes but i try to narrow it down um i feel like there was definitely i found in the little amateur online cam world that there's lots of fetishes like a lot of fetishes yeah. Um, I feel like that was, everyone thinks like, oh, foot fetish is crazy. Like, no, that's like the most vanilla fetish. Like there's so much crazy stuff. So I think that was really fun. And I definitely learned more about like sexuality and, um, kind of stuff from that and what people are looking for. Um, I think I expected people to be more, treat me like meat more, I would say. Um, which obviously that happens every now and then, but there are so many nice people that just, they give like so much because they appreciate what we put out. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of, it's, I don't know. I mean, I mostly do like the online porn. I'm not like on sets too often. Um, so it's just me alone on a couch with my sex toys and having fun. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you definitely have the best route. And I'm sure that, I mean, it's probably not because, you know, you could watch like fucking Boogie Nights or, you know, any of these like movies that are about like the porn industry and they all make it seem like it's the women are treated like meat, everybody's yeah. on drugs. Like it's yeah. This, which, you know, in the 70s, I don't know, maybe it was, I mean, probably like everybody was on drugs in the 70s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah doing coke like in between yeah. patients so, yes but it does seem like now the people are so much more accepting of it that mm -hmm. all of the actresses and actors are treated like really well it seems yeah. like no and yeah that's another thing there's all, um, also a lot of like sober people it's really nice just kind of there's i think even at avn's this year there was like a sober hangout area so I think that was kind of a cool thing. Um, 
because I actually stopped, decided to stop drinking this year. <laughs> um, so I was like, good time to start. I don't know, 2020, stuck in my house. This will be the time that I not drink. Um, but there's, I've met some of the most intelligent, creative people ever. It's, people in this industry are geniuses. Like they are geniuses. Um, because it is hard when there is like nudes and everything on the internet. It's hard to like get someone to pay to see your tits when they can see tits. So you have to make it special. You kind of have to think of those little business plans. And I think you really have to understand yourself and what you have to offer and mm -hmm. what you can, what you are able to give and stuff. So you have to really know yourself and kind of know yourself sexually and find your brand and niche. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think you probably have to be a lot more business minded than the, than what most people would think because it is yeah. entertainment for sure just like movies or music or anything yeah. else i feel like with porn because there's so many ways that people could skip seeing you you know what i mean like there's so many people that you have to have like a business mind that no other entertainment like entertainer has to have yeah and if you're not getting that traffic from the mainstream media, you, I mean, we always have to market our, do self marketing and, you know, kind of learn how to edit. And there's a lot, I mean, I was teaching myself coding and how to like do stuff. It's a lot of, but it's motivating because you're working for yourself and your business. So you want to learn and you want to get better. And it's definitely very motivating. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So if you could do, a video with any famous person who would it be so like, not an non adult uh christina hendrix for a girl do you know her have you seen mad men yeah, he's a mad men and um, drive wow. yeah big tits red hair oh yeah That's oh. A good one. <laughs> and, um for my man for a man i would do gerard butler i love scottish accents he's yeah it's, I like it's hairy, rugged men. <laughs> it's definitely an accent that sounds better on the guys than the females. The Scottish <laughs> accent is not the prettiest accent. Nothing oh. against Scottish people, but geez. Oh, no, I, I love the Scottish accent. So those, those are who I would be doing hard. So, Is that what you think the, the sexiest accent is, Scottish? yeah yes i do i think german german or like any of the romance languages like um you know portuguese italian spanish oh, like, those are like, like wow well, like yeah, i tried learning german a little bit and yeah i'm not that good at it but i do like it like it's a cool language and german women like whenever they're speaking german's like jesus Really? So do you kind of like aggressive girls? Like, I don't know, passionate girls? Yeah. Because with German, the accent you have to speak with a little. I know a little German. I'm bisschen Deutsch. Yeah. 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 So, ich verstehe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a very aggressive language but i like that's what it, that is what i like is like aggressive like empowered women i guess is mm -hmm. i don't know if that was the right word but yeah i like i like women that seem like they could beat the shit out of you if they had to they were the best <laughs> <laughs> like yeah every girl that i've ever dated i was like 90 percent sure could kick my ass if it oh came down. so funny <laughs> Do you know who uh, Phoenix Marie is? She's a porn yeah. star. Do you have you seen her like do the bench press blow job? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, that's a good one too. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. She throws her men around a little bit. Yeah. See, I mean, I'm a pretty big dude, so that shit's not really ever gonna happen. <laughs> but like I just like like women that seem like like they just don't take shit from people. Right. No, they just know who they are and absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I totally like, I don't understand. Like being like reserved, like quiet and reserved. I okay. Mean, you are, you know, but yeah. Like absolutely. No, I I definitely know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like a girl that could get you kicked out of a restaurant. Oh, you like the feisty ones. It's 
it's fun. I mean, it's a hell of a lot more fun. Yeah, way more than the boring girl sipping her tea in the corner, beating a book. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, yeah, that's good. Well, no, I mean, let's see. I think we're at the end. Yeah, we're kind of at the cutoff. So, I mean, is there anything that you have to promote that you'd like to promote? Where can people... Um, you can uh, follow me on Twitter at the... Annabelle XXX and on Instagram at the Annabelle Rogers. And if you click my bio link in either of those, it brings you to my all my links, which is all the places you can find me, like Pornhub and all that. And um, just Google me otherwise. <laughs> so, yeah, I can yeah. No Annabelle like Rogers. <laughs> Thank you. Well, oh, and then last question we usually ask uh, almost everybody. If I was gonna be a porn star, what should my name be? Ooh, um, I've got some good ones, so. Um, I'm, I'm just, this is like the first thing that popped in my head is Rugged Romeo. <laughs> okay, all right. It's the first thing. If I put more thought into it, it could probably get better, but that's my first thing. No, you good. could, you need to do like the Lumberjack Harry man thing where you like come out of the woods and you're shirtless and sweaty and hairy. No, no. Well, <laughs> that could definitely happen. But the only problem is like, I can't grow facial hair any other way except just like white trash facial hair. Uh, well, move some of your chest plugs to like your face or something. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But, you yeah, gotta, you gotta really commit to your character. This is your chosen fetish. <laughs> I've been cursed with these dirt bag jeans and now I'm I can go with them goatee a mile long, but I can't get shit anywhere else. So yeah. Fabulous. <laughs> All right, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Rugged Romeo. I'm going to the courthouse tomorrow. <laughs> I expect to see you your debut soon. Yeah, well, fingers crossed. <laughs> and it's not gonna be good, but I'll do what I can. <laughs> Perfect. Um, thank you. Well, I appreciate everything. It was great talking to you. Have yes. a great rest of your night. You as well. Thanks for inviting me. And yeah, have a fabulous rest of your day. And I hope you survive the rest of 2020. Uh, hmm, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again. Well, I guess you just have to be prepared to die. Well, what? Get off your cell phones. Pay attention. I tell you, you start counting five like a sucker.